Hello, everyone, and welcome to a crossover episode. Uh, we are doing JKL Media and Set Lusting Bruce. Uh, so uh, either feed, you will hear this. Uh, I am in the hayloft with Lou. Hello, everyone. And my the podcast mom, Karen. Hello. So we're having a spiritual uh, relationship with the hayloft. Wasn't that what he said? Yes. Uh, so we are um, Set Lessing Bruce. Uh, my Bruce Springsteen podcast is hitting a thousand episodes in April. And I asked Lou and Karen, who I do a Babylon 5 podcast with every week, uh, if they would join me. One of the things we do in between Babylon 5 episodes is we each take turns picking a something to discuss. We've talked devs, we've talked the English, uh, we've talked Midnight Mass. And so I said, well, would you guys mind in getting off genre and do Western Stars, the Bruce Springsteen concert film? And they both, because they love me, said yes. <laughs> and so that's what we're talking about. We are talking about Western Stars. Uh, for those of you who may not be, who are listening to on the JKL Media uh, feed, Western Stars was a album that Bruce recorded. It is very much in the theme of California 70s rock. A lot of Jimmy Webb, Glenn Campbell kind of feel, book Burt Bacharach feels. And uh, when he released it, he knew that it it was impossible to tour with the arrangements and a lot of strings. So instead what they did is they filmed him singing the album live in front of an audience, a very small audience. And uh, they filmed it. They add a few other things between the songs and it ends up being a little bit more than a concert film. And I can't wait to discuss um, whether Lou or Karen hated it, loved it or <laughs> me. So let's start with you, Lou. Quick thoughts. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> I'm a little nervous about this because I know your fans, our, your listeners on the Springsteen podcast are very passionate. And I saw some Twitter responses to the fact that we were doing this and they were going to they were very, very excited about us doing this. So I, I have to come into this and I have to be honest. I'm. And it, part of this is to do with artists, uh, uh, especially ones with uh, such a long career as Bruce Springsteen. You could, you, you know, uh, I'll, I'll go to my favorite, this Stephen King. They have different phases of their career. And for me, Springsteen, I liked him quite. I like him quite a lot. I mean, I, I went to his Born in the U.S. Uh, Born in the USA tour. I think that for me, his phases that he's gone through. I'm I'm I really enjoy up until Human Touch I believe is that is that an album name or is that just a track on that album? Yeah, that's that's, an that's album. the album. And then after that, he's become a different artist to me. He's slowed down. He's become much more like a a, a, Wood, a Woody Guthrie kind of artist. And I appreciate the music, uh, uh, the sentiment of the songs and that. But the style of music that he does doesn't appeal to me as much. So I have to take that into account for this because. The songs that he does in it are, for me, they're they're okay. But I, I can't say I, I really got to, you know too jazzed by any of them. I thought the last one he did, "Rhinestone Cowboy," was probably the best song in the in the whole thing. But that's just me. So Bruce fans out there, please don't hate me. I love the boss. He is the boss for a reason, yeah. and it's just a, a, a musical taste. This style of music is just a little too slow for me, <clears throat> and uh, I. I appreciated everything that he said and and uh, did in the album or in the concert. Uh, you know, the lyrics are great in that. It's just the actual content of the music is a little too samey for me from song to song. It, it is a very mellow album in a lot mm -hmm. of ways. Uh, so I think that's a very fair. Um, I do now want you to listen to Letter to You, which is his next to last album uh, with the E Street Band. They recorded it in three or four days. And okay. I'm now going to have you on the podcast to discuss that. To see oh, boy. Like that's more. <laughs> All right. Uh, no. And this is a space space. As I've told many times when I have people who are 
not massive Springsteen fans. I, I, this is a safe space. The only thing I want is you to give me a answer, not, I didn't like mm-hmm. it. Okay. Well, that makes for a lousy podcast. Exactly. Karen, how about you? What are your thoughts on this? I think I might be the opposite of Lou. There's something I love, which I've never said, actually, I don't think. Um, well, number one, I love Annie Lennox. And a lot of her solo songs have orchestral backgrounds. And that was something I really loved. I mean, coming from a from a background of singing and having an orchestra in back of me and, and that kind of thing. And my brother being part of the uh, Salinas uh, Hartnell Orchestra, um, I, I kind of love that sound. And hearing that on this album was a, a huge treat for me. Uh, I also loved the themes because I'm from California and a lot of this is very, it, it's not California based, but like Western based, which is a big thing out there. And, you know, I grew up with my grandparents owning a a farm and there was, if you go outside of my hometown, there's a lot of scrub. uh, So this kind of environment. And I was really just immediately drawn into it. I loved his storytelling. It was a very story based episode and very lyrical, I thought. Uh, And I will say there there was a sameness to it, but I loved the background of every song. And I thought, like I said, very lyrical, very uh, pleasing. And okay, that's not the right word because I'm comparing it to other Bruce things. It's not pleasing in comparison with some of his other works. I just think it's different. And We didn't hear that scratchy New Jersey kind of voice that we're used to hearing with him, which again, I mean, it's, I love it as well, but this was very subdued. It was um, just uh, more of a, of a practiced sound for him. I think, I I don't think that's a natural voice for him. So, um, Seeing that he actually went to all this, you know, research and, you know, the fact that each song was about something, hitchhiking or, uh, God, I don't remember all of it, a cowboy, an old, yeah, uh, yeah an like, old TV star. Yeah, uh, Western yeah. stars, yeah. Right. About, yeah. So there was something behind each song, and that also appealed to me very much. And I thought it was gorgeous. The barn was lovely and uh you know with strong lights and him describing that they've done weddings and stuff there uh i just i really really liked it um i i was saying to my husband you should come watch this with me he was like no thanks because he's not into that kind of music video type thing but i really did i was sincere and i wanted him to come watch it and he was like no no i don't think so but I can see where, he, you know, he's just not that kind of person. And where I can see, again, there's just not that kind of person that wants to watch a music-based movie. Uh, I think it's worth watching if you're at all inclined to watch anything like that. Yeah, the uh, fandom base, there were certainly fans who were unhappy with this because it is very different. I think it is similar in tone, though not musical style, to Nebraska. Nebraska mm-hmm. was the album where he did a lot of short stories and very darkness, uh, very dark stories that, um, of course, Nebraska, he recorded in his house with a recorder, and they ended up cleaning that up and releasing it. This was a very lush audience. But what I've ex- described to a lot of people is I feel like this is a collection of inner l- Elmore Leonard short stories, mm-hmm. you know, the guy who wrote Justified and, you know, the others. Get lefty. Yep. Yeah, Lefty, that it, it there is that collection of short stories. They are very uh, lyrical, very short story-ish. And um, I get the idea, Lou, that this is not what you expect when you see Bruce. Um, I did want to start with, and thank Karen mentioned that, um, 
he talks about the barn as almost another character. Um, it is absolutely beautiful. Uh, if you've watched the film, it is, uh, you know, he they are in the hayloft. He talks about keeping all this hay and they built this. I went and saw this in the theater twice. And the first time I was with my wife and Clay and Mary, which is why, uh, Larry's, uh, Linda's sister and uh, Mary's husband, Clay. And uh, Linda reached over and said, how jealous of you. How jealous are you of those people in that barn? I'm like, oh, I am so jealous um, because, you know, you're getting this private thing, uh, audience, um, a full orchestra to a certain degree. There's tons of cellos and violins and bass, and they've got uh, this wonderful, um, the only members of the E Street Band is Charlie, who currently plays um, organ plays uh patty is there singing with him and then Susie tyrell who plays the violin and guitar and sings back row with the three band was one of the background musicians so i i don't know if we'll go through every song but um we'll start with you karen are there a couple of songs that stand out to you yeah you're gonna have to remind me of the names that's okay okay uh the one with the accordion solos in it. I really loved uh, again. Here's another reference for you. I'm I'm gonna equate I'm gonna be like Bruce and equate this to me a little bit. Absolutely. Um my town was full of migrant workers, uh, because we are Salinas is the lettuce capital of the world. Uh if you eat iceberg lettuce, you eat it from Salinas. Uh there's no place else that it can come from. But anyway. I mean, other places grow it, but the only uh, lettuce you see in stores is most likely from Salinas. Anyway, um, a lot of migrant workers. And in that case, it means people from Mexico. And it was it really reminded me of their music. Uh, and, you know, we got to listen to it a lot in school and, you know, just from our friends. And, you know, I go over to a friend's birthday party and they'd be playing this kind of Spanish uh, feel music with accordions and and lots of other, you know, Latin-based instruments. And not that the accordion is Latin-based, but you know what I mean. It's used in a lot of Mexican songs, Spanish songs. Yes. Uh, and that song really stood out for me. And like Lou said, I liked Rhinestone Cowboy a lot. Which I know is not a Bruce song, but I thought he did a really great job on it. Uh, I believe, and, oh, I'm sorry. I was no, no, go ahead. go ahead. I believe in a different time that would have been a hit on country and country radio. Yeah. I mean, that isn't what they do now, but I believe that back in the 70s or 80s, that when that would have been a hit, because right. yes, he did a great version of that. And, uh, I think it's uh, Western Stars that is the one about the the aging yes, rock, uh, aging, aging yeah. television star. I like that one as well. What is the song with the accordion? Uh, Sleepy Joe's Cafe. Thank you. Yes, yes where I he, love that. Yeah, he talks about where he walks in on Friday and Monday seems a mile away. Um, yeah, that's that's a very upbeat song. Um, how about you, Lou? Anything that while you didn't love as a whole, is there any that stand out to you that you might <laughs> well, dislike a little less? Yeah. It's not that I does I dislike them. I just found yeah. them all to be kind of like on the same kind of plane. So it's, yeah. it's, it was hard for me to pick out one over the other. I do think Tucson train had the best story or, or the, the story that it, uh, hooked me the most about him waiting for his, um, loved one to uh, you know to come to town because he's worked really hard to improve his life so i, I and i want to re-emphasize i i love the sentiment of every song that he sings and the story that he tells to set up every song it's just and it, it's a it's a trite um you know critique to say that uh, of an artist that everything they, that they do sounds the same because it with the the one listen that I had with it, it's it's really hard to pick out the nuances of all the songs, uh, various songs, and that it would take multiple listens for me to really 
come down and say these are the songs that i like the best but i i the one that jumped out to me the most was tucson train and joe's cafe as well as that karen mentioned and uh strictly from an energy perspective i just found when he sang roundstone rhinestone cowboy he sounded and looked or acted a little more like the bruce that grown to know like there was just more energy in that song as opposed to most of the other ones that he did or that are in the same vein of introspective you know contemplation and that would probably be my biggest critique of the album is that every song stylistically and tone wise they were all the same like they were all about and uh, and i don't mean that in, just in how they sounded but just in their tone and that that they were all about somebody you know looking back on their life and uh, with regret or or hoping to make changes for the better and that would be my major criticism of this album is that the tone of each the theme of each song is is basically um the same so and it's and i don't know if it was the mix but for me sometimes and, and i do like an orchestra like karen said but to me the orchestra was overpowering the rest of bruce's band a lot of times so i couldn't really hear the piano and the guitar picking uh, at the level that i wanted to hear it at and i don't know if that was a artistic decision or whatnot so that would yeah. be it, it my would, thoughts on the, the tracks it would be interesting to if you listen to the studio album right because he did mm -hmm. this as a studio album then they filmed this and they released the soundtrack so you have the live versions as well did you notice a difference between the two or yes i think the the live versions had a little more energy, which is surprising, mm. right? That you're saying mm -hmm. it doesn't. Um, you know, I, I, I want to talk for a little bit. You mentioned uh, Tucson Train. Um, by far, Tucson Trains. If I had to pick one track, that is my favorite track. Um, mm. it, and, Interesting. And it, yeah, because I, I know this story. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I see this, the singer of this has messed up bad. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's an alcohol problem. I don't know if it's a drug problem. I don't know if it was infidelity. Whatever they did, it was really, really bad. And so they have moved on to a new city. You could almost beat the story that he, he or she, you know, um, because by the way, um, Bella Pori, who's listening, she would make the argument that every song is this is about a gay couple coming to grips with each other. She said that she just loves this album so much. I love that you can read stuff like that into yeah. things. I love it. Yeah. And so I just see maybe he was a white collar, an accountant or some kind of executive. And now then he's rebuilding his life. He's gone. He's he is working uh, you know, with a crane and he is doing this. And I just see him calling his significant other and says, give me a weekend. Just no, no, please just give me a weekend. We're not, you don't commit to anything else, but the weekend, you know, and, and that line, I can show her a man can change. And we don't know if she comes. He says, I'm waiting on the 515, you know, and, and he leaves it. You you hope she comes. She hopes that he has a chance. And even if they don't get back together, maybe they at least could be some mutual respect. Little Steven, when he was touring, did a version of this live. Um, and I, he, Bruce has not done any songs on his latest tour from this album. And I think Part of the reason is exactly what you're saying, Lou. This is not something that's going to get the crowd up and, you know, except high, hardcore fans. There is a lot of love about Western stars. The idea that you're this fading Western actor that's now doing Viagra pills. And you could actually, you know, he said, I got shot by John Wayne once and that's bought me a lot of drinks. And I love the phrase, I woke up this morning and my boots were still on. His version of, <laughs> I'm still here. I'm still going. Yeah, and you can also take that as, I got so drunk last night that I passed out with my clothes on. Absolutely. The Let's talk a little bit of the, 
Bruce wrote the soundtrack. So the orchestra that is playing between the songs and with the films, he wrote that music as well, uh, which I was pretty impressed with because I didn't know Bruce could write a soundtrack. <laughs> he got credit for directing this. Uh, um, Tom Zimini is the guy that has done multiple documentaries about Bruce and that is they worked together and Bruce said that really all he did was hey maybe we should do maybe they, we should do this but Tom was kind enough to give that uh talk any anything you want to share Lou about some of the stories or the dialogue between the songs I, I was intrigued because I haven't followed Bruce uh, that closely since like I mentioned you've been touching that but he he mentioned that yeah. uh, I believe it was before Tucson Train about the fact that he has had a bad habit of pushing loved ones away, which I was not aware of. Um, and I can't really think of any. I mean, he had that one prior marriage with the with the model. Uh, I don't remember her name now, but Julianne Phillips. And he he said that he a lot of that came out of the fact that he did it because it was sort of expected of his lifestyle to do that. And uh, I don't know if that is what played a part in that story or not, because I I always thought it was weird that she looked a lot like his current wife, Patty, right? But just a younger version. And I thought, well, that must have been a hard for her to take. But uh, whatever you know, issues they have had, they have I, they've apparently worked it out because they seem very close in the in the movie. So that was probably the main piece of storytelling that he told that stood out to me and then just you know it's talking about you know the themes about the the only really things that we have in, in life that are are worth having are like the love uh, and um kinship of, of family which is a you know a theme that we've we see all the time and a lot of different works and that so those those were the main things that um that came out for me. So it was uh, that and the fact that people make mistakes and they have to learn from them and try to, to better themselves. Uh, you know, it's just a very positive, hopeful message um, delivered in a even keeled manner. I guess I would have. Yeah. The one thing I would have liked in this would have been, you know, maybe one fast song. Like I don't, have to have a you know a jungle land or 10th avenue freeze out but just something with a little yeah. more like rhinestone cowboy in the middle of the sets list because most albums you have like this you know the this quiet songs and you build up to something fast and you go down again which is fine but this yeah. one was just on an even keel all the way through and to really appreciate the intricacies and uh the treasures that it have would take multiple listens and you know, within the time frame that we had to do this, uh, yeah. that wasn't possible for me. So I don't want to give like a final rating or anything on it because okay. I would need to listen to it more to appreciate the, those uh, all the nuances that uh, that you you were pointing out that I haven't picked up on yet. Yeah. So I, the line is: for a long time, if I loved you and if I felt a deep attachment to you, I would hurt you if I could. It was a sin, and I still have days where I struggle with it. Which I found um, surprising. Yeah. So in his biography, which came out before this, and he talks a little bit about on um, Bruce on Broadway, that he has, in his biography, he talked a lot, he has struggled with depression his whole life. Oh, okay. And uh, that, and he tells the story that he has, he is at dinner with Julianne, and he is staring at her going, she is absolutely beautiful. She loves me a hundred percent. And but if she really knew me, she would not love me. And so I don't know I, I'm not worthy of her. And if you listen to Tunnel of Love, he talks a lot about this. He's very open in his biography that she did everything right in the marriage and he just was he sabotaged it and was not ready and um was and and you know she has never talked about the marriage whatsoever mm -hmm. um and i and i i get the feeling i don't think this is totally because crass bruce gave her a lot of money and an nda i just think she truly just 
this was, you know, something that and so he he gives a hundred percent the blame on the marriage breaking up is him and that he was not ready. Mm, I suspected as much, but yeah. Yeah. And and so um and and I I love the idea, right, that if you love me, I'm gonna hurt you before you can hurt me. That preemptive. Karen, thoughts on any of that? Yeah, that song with Patty was really touching. I loved his vignette there uh, where he does talk about the fact that he didn't feel like he was good enough for anybody and all that. Um, You can really see his insecurities there. Uh, One of the things that struck me personally is where he talks about how uh, we like to have our intimate relationships, but we also need a community. And for me, I was thinking to myself, I don't know about that. I had a hard time connecting to that statement. Although that's on me, that's my thing. I feel like every once in a while, I just need to drop every, I just need to be myself with myself. I don't want to talk to anyone else. I don't, I don't want a community. And I I thought, and it, Again, it's thought provoking, even if you don't agree with his statement, it makes you think about yourself. And that really struck a chord in me that I feel like I'm not like that, that I just I feel like there are people that don't want a community. Uh, And with me, it's it's not 100 percent of the time. It's just there are some times that I'm like, I don't want to talk to anybody. Uh, And he does say everybody wants a community. And I, I was shaking my head. Nope, not everybody does. Well, what I read that to mean is we are both. We need the community and we need a solitary time. Um, and I would argue, yes, you have a community of Lou and I and, yes. and Charles and other f- friends that you have built in there. And you have a wonderful community with your Sean. So, but at the same time, we are solitary people. And I think the discussion is, is that dual combination is, you know, as he talked about, we're, we're explorers, yet we're also introverts. And it, it's a really well done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My community is like, yeah. The- yeah. I especially <laughs> like his cautionary note about if you, if you build a world where you're alone, you're going to end up in a world alone. I thought that yeah. was, uh, I thought was a, a great point. And which is what it's something that I think about is that, am mm-hmm. I going to, am I going to live out my last days with just my husband next to me and no one else around? Yeah. And so, I mean, that's something that I think about is that, you know, yeah. is my community that important? And you guys are, I, I mean, know. yes, you guys are super important to me. Yeah. And I would also include Charles in that, although I don't talk to him as much anymore. I would love to have him back in the fold of my community. Yeah. So, uh, but he and I got really close doing the podcast that we did. Um, I, I feel like you guys are more my community than anybody else. I'm estranged from my family, which, and it worries me that I'm not upset by that. Uh, and I I have connections with my husband's family, which is good, but we don't talk to them very often. Mm -hmm. So again, that, that little vignette, I mean, it brought me to this whole thought, this whole introspection about myself. So that really hit me as well. But the thing with Patty, I thought was great. And the fact that they sung that song together. Yeah. And cool. The studio versions, she does not sing with him. And so I think that was a really nice version. A nice touch. Yeah. She, um, he talks a lot about that she is, you know, one of my favorite stories is he, he talks about when they had the kids, he did the night shift because as a rock star, right, you, you stay up till three, four in the morning, five in the morning, you get up and you sleep till 12, two in the afternoon. And uh, and he says when they were little, that was fine. But as they started getting older in school age, um, it was tougher. And he said, Patty came to him and says, you're missing it. You are missing it. 
And the morning is when they're their best. When they're in the afternoon, they're tired, but the more you are missing it. And he said, what do I do? And he says, cook breakfast. I'm a rock star. I don't know how to cook breakfast. And he tells the story. He went to whoever their, um, you know, because they're rich, they have a chef, right? And he said, show me how to make pancakes. <laughs> and he and and there was an interview where he would Jimmy Buffett was talking and he says, I was talking to Bruce Springsteen and to our kids, we're just the pancake maker. We yeah. are not anything. And he said, I will tell you right now that if it all goes away, all the money's away, I could support myself and Patty by being a morning shift at a diner. I can cook breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he also has explained that she has, you know, talked to him about you need to get you, you, you need to get back. And so he's very open the biography about medicine and depression. His father was schizophrenic and, and uh, I, I maybe not schizophrenic. I, his father had mental issues and they talked a lot about that. So this mm -hmm. is to me a second chapter of the autobiography like his book springsteen on broadway and this is a trilogy kind of telling his life the first um single came out was hello sunshine hello and this is had enough of heartbreak and pain i had a little sweet spot for the rain for the rain and skies of gray hello sunshine won't you stay you know i always liked my walking shoes but you can get a little too fond of the blues you walk too far, you walk away. Hello, sunshine, won't you stay? I love the idea that if you aren't careful, you can fall in love with the blues. You can fall in love. And he, one of the other lyrics he said, or statements he said is, you, we don't know how to hold on to love, but we know how to hold on to hurt. Um. <laughs> Any thoughts on that, either one of you? Absolutely. I, I think that that's shown in the fact that everybody wants their stories about their heroes to be dark. It's got to be dark. It's got to be dark. It's got to yeah. be, if, if it's not dark, it's not good. And dark is easier to do than and light because, uh, you know, just turn on the news and you see nothing like how, how often do you get a good news segment? It's it's usually like an add on thing that they throw in at the end of the broadcast, like along with your fashion show news or whatever, or people's, you know, the famous people's uh, up to date antics or whatever. And I think there is a a thing in human nature that's attracted to dark in the fact that we like to suffer or we take pleasure in the fact that I'm seeing this person suffer, but my life might not be great, but it's not this bad kind of thing. And I think that's a lot of, I I, I don't know that I, I'm no psychiatrist or doctor or anything, but I think a lot of what media does is why there's a lot of people that are depressed because we keep on showing the dark things uh, in life and, and not nearly enough time is spent on the good things in life. So, Well said. Karen? Yeah, and it makes it easier to be depressed, I think. Mm -hmm. If you're already leaning that way, you watch the news and it, it's just easier to fall further. I also suffer from depression, but it is very... I wrote a blog post about this and it was called The Masks I Wear. Um, people don't know that I have pain because I put on a happy mask. Um, right now I have a lot of pain right now. Just talking to you two, um, not be, my not shoulder, because of us. Oh. no, no, no. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> saying just... you guys wouldn't know from talking yeah. to me right. that my shoulder is burning right now. Mm. Um, and, and I really, I, it's a concerted effort for me. When I'm in a conference with a client or with my boss or with you guys, I'm happy. I'm upbeat. But underneath that, I have a very dark feeling. And I feel like there's a huge swath of society that has that same underlying depression. And we don't talk about it. 
And I love that he's open about it and open about his family. A lot of people wouldn't admit that their father had issues and that it's passed down to him and that he takes pills and, you know, or medicine, whatever. I'm, I'm not talking about drug pills. I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I also take a pill for my mood. It also helps with pain. So I don't think there's anything shameful. Um, we take pills for lots of things for headaches for, and nobody looks down on people for that. And depression is just another illness. So that's something that really needs to be brought to the fore. And I, I thought some of the songs and the lyrics that he says are very clearly about overcoming depression. And I, I commend him for that. And I know he's been very open about that. So uh, those really did uh, again, strike a chord for me. Yeah, I, I I think, and this was a one of the reviewers talked about that, and this sounds like a cliche, but if frickin' Bruce Springsteen, who <laughs> is a rock star, who has everything you want, is fighting depression, that tells you it's a medical thing. It isn't a money thing. It isn't a prestige thing. It isn't a fame thing. It is just everything. So, yeah. Um, all right. The uh, I did want to share that um, this was it won uh, Critics' Choice uh, Documentary Awards. Uh, he they won Best Narration for Bruce Springsteen, so he he's got that along with his Golden Globe and Grammys and Oscar, um, and it was nominated for Outstanding Achievement in Sound Editing. Did not win. This was a. Um, you know, it it is a, another piece of his, um, you know, his product. I did want to mention, and then we'll we'll wrap it up. Um, Moonlight Motel is the last song till Rhinestone Cowboy, and it's all about um, a guy going to where you assume he and his wife would spend times, and uh, he he kind of talks about that the hotel is now boarded up, but it brings back happy memories. And uh, I had a listener, as you both know, I end every podcast with the Mary question, does Mary get in the car? And someone said yes. And uh, Moonlight Motel, he said her and Mary, him and Mary got in the car. They drove to California. They built a life and Mary has now died. And Moonlight Motel is him mourning her. And so the answer is yes. Yes. She got in the car. And so uh, I, I thought that was, um, if I don't know if that is the right answer, but it should be. So um, I do think the film is a beautiful film to look. The scenes out in the West with the horses and the desert and him driving the El Camino is just absolutely a beautiful film. Any final thoughts, Lou? No, it's uh, it's a very well made and produced uh, project. As you mentioned, the the scenery, the barn, everything about it is is really cool. I I think the only thing in the concert I would have liked is some audience shots. I don't even know if there was any, to be honest. Uh, mostly from the back of the head, if any. Yeah, it's they did weird. not show you that. Yeah, it's kind of weird that they didn't do that. This, but um, yeah, it's uh, you know, it's something that. I can appreciate, and this and this is something that will come up when we do our next pod uh, uh, special because I'm going to return the favor on you because one of the, and I don't want to hijack this too much because this no. is about Bruce, but you struck me with the idea that I think for, uh, and I believe it's my turn next, right? For yeah. The, yeah. So I'm going to introduce you guys to a Canadian band, the Tragically Hip. I have because heard them. You've, you've heard them or heard I of them? I have heard of them. And, okay. And yeah. Because they, in a way, are corollary. Because, like Bruce, in, in Canada, we think of the tragically hip. They provide the soundtrack of our lives. So they're a universally loved band in Canada, across Canada. Never made it in the states, the, despite several attempts. But back in it was 2015, I believe uh, the lead singer Gordani was diagnosed with brain cancer, mm. terminal brain cancer. So in 2016, he wanted to do a cross Canada final goodbye tour with the tragically hip and it's just an amazing tour de force of uh, you know willpower and support from from everybody and i i just want to introduce you to these guys 
they do a, they're kind of a, a rocky bluesy band they they do uh, some whimsical stuff but a lot of the reason why they're so popular is that they incorporate real news events that happened in canada into their songs so uh, i'm really looking forward to doing that and this is my two-pronged <laughs> ambling then Hopefully that some people that listen to your Bruce Springsteen podcast will come over to the JKL Media podcast and listen to this episode. Uh, hope to hopefully introducing a new start, uh, you know, a new group to you, and they have the same vibe in a certain way that Springsteen has because they talk about real life things. But they're much their lyrics are uh, they're more open to interpretation. They're much more po- poetic, I guess you could say. But they're much like Springsteen, they're so entwined with the psyche of the country. Uh, I, I think it would be safe to say that Springsteen's the voice of uh, in the United States for for a lot of people. I mean, it's a bit different in the States because you're such a bigger country than Canada that there's, you know, very different cultures in that. But I, I think generally, you know, you could say Bruce Springsteen and everybody, you know, yeah, he's the boss and for a reason and whatnot. He talks about the blue collar workers and so forth. So very similar vibe uh, and springsteen is for a guy uh, he's 70 something now yeah 73 74 73. I think 74 in yeah. september so i don't know uh, this was done in 2019 he's remarkably remarkably preserved for his age i yes, mean you yes. if he's not moving and he's just standing there you would know that he was 70 he looks like he's yeah. in his 50s you can see yeah. it in his movements and that that he's his age but He's one of a kind for sure. And um Yeah. I I recommend you when you have time, Google the latest tour and watch a few clips from him, like whether mm-hmm. it's Glory Days, Dancing in the Dark, um, you know, Tenth Avenue Freeze Out, whatever, you pick one. And he's not moving quite as much as he used to, right. but he's still pretty active, you know. So that's yeah. great. Like, you know, the, um, the only person that's impressed me like that is William Shatner. I mean, the guy just turned yeah. 93 and you wouldn't yeah, know exactly. it, right? It's yeah. unbelievable. <laughs> so uh one of my unscripted with uh Skip and Josh is a podcast that's from Canada, and Skip's been on the podcast multiple times, he's a huge Springsteen fan. And they talk about the Tragically Hip all the time, that it's their favorite band. Yeah, so they, I'm really looking forward to looking at that. They're both Canadian. So, okay. yeah, that'll be great. So You're going to yeah. give us a playlist there? Yeah, I've, I've just uh, composed an email, but for some Good. reason now I can't all right. find the send button. Very <laughs> okay, <laughs> and along that vein, yes, I talked to you guys about this last week when we talked about watching this. I highly recommend Play from David Grohl. Mm-hmm. He is okay. David Girl and I share a high school. He went to my high school for a couple of years. His mother taught there, and uh, we overlapped by a year. And then he was, uh, it's on Wikipedia, so I'm not afraid to say it, but he smoked a lot of pot. Yeah. And his mother wasn't happy, so she sent him to a private boarding school. Okay. Uh, it was, you know, in our town. Uh, it yeah. was not too far away, but uh, so he got sent away and I stayed there another year. So I have a fondness for his music. I have started from Nirvana. One of my teachers found me uh, working at a store at Walden Software back then. She came in and she's like, do you know, because I had a, I had the CD from Nirvana and she said, did you know that David Grohl is in that band? And I was like, yep. <laughs> so <laughs> we chatted about it. And so I've been a fan of his since way back. And uh, he did a, a video. It's about, what, 30 minutes long. And he plays every instrument. Okay. It's around in a circle and they spliced it. So you see him playing with himself and no, not playing with himself, but you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Um, he plays all the instruments together in a song and it, he also introduces it with, you know, his own personal thoughts. So I would highly recommend that. And maybe down the line, we'll talk okay. about that. I mean, I think that would be cool. I would love that. That sounds great. Uh, all right. We won't rate this, uh, but thank you guys for joining me. It, it is, um, you know, this is a perfect way that two of my 
best friends join me as we celebrate a thousand episodes of Set Lusting Bruce. Um, it is interesting that, you know, Jimmy Webb, um, who written a lot of 70 songs, uh, he says is very much this is an influence on him. I agree. My my if I had a nitpick, it's a few multiple years ago, Bruce did an album called The Seeger Sessions, where he did a tribute album to songs that Bob Seeger had recorded. And when they toured, he brought a band, the Seeger Session band, and they started mixing up and they did like Atlantic City, Blinded by the Light, other Springsteen classics with that band. Mm -hmm. And I wish he had done three or four or greedy five standard Bruce Springsteen songs with this band in Western stars. He mm. was there anyway, kind of expand that. Cause I think to hearing the string section and everything would have been a lot of fun to see him do that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Awesome. Uh, all right. Uh, so we're all music lovers, which is yes, awesome. I love that. Uh, Lou, if someone wants to reach you, and tell you that they love the tragically hip how can they <laughs> uh, the, and uh bruce fans out there uh please don't hate me for not being overly gushy about this but no, uh, you know i have to be honest yeah. with my reaction to well, it so and uh i need to get you we we'd already been talking about you having on set lessing bruce to talk about canadian music Mm -hmm. But now that I know you're in the Born in the USA tour, we got to have you on. So we'll make that happen. In <laughs> God, the next that goes back a long time ago. Man. Yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Okay, well, the, uh, in, until that happens, you, know, you can find us on uh, YouTube at Lose Reviews, where we, uh, besides our JKL Media podcast, doing one-offs like this, we also review Babylon 5, but host the Stephen King podcast along with Karen, and I do a solo writer's interview podcast with uh, various writers, uh, fiction writers generally, and on Twitter, you can find me at Lou W. Sitzma or at S. King Podcast. All right. And Karen, who has been on the podcast uh, several years ago, we did Nerd Rock. Yep. We talked about, I thought you were going to pick um, the um, the Weird Al Yankovic film for our next discussion. We mm. were pick. Yeah, um, I love Weird Al. Because uh, I have not seen that yet. Here's, I went to see Weird Al who opened for the monkeys. So I went to see that concert. I have not seen Dave Grohl live except for in high school. Uh, <laughs> so I haven't gone to any of his concerts, but yeah, um, I, I maybe should have talked about weird Al. but that movie is a parody. Essentially. You're talking about weird. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's funny. Uh, and I love that weird Al had a part in writing it, but anyway, um, I am at Elevaria on uh, the Twitter machine, and there's a link in my bio to my blog at which you can find a bunch of other links, one of which is Set Lusting Bruce. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. So uh, thank you, guys. Uh, as always, I appreciate you. Uh, if you've never watched Babylon 5, you know, check it out watch a few episodes and uh, check us out. It is a tough show just to pick a random episode to watch, but uh, it is de definitely worth the time. If you are looking for a, a, if you are a horror fan of you not seen Midnight Mass, I urge you to watch that and then come back and hear our discussion on it. Uh, same thing for devs. It was really an interesting series. And we have a and lot of Station fun. Eleven. Yeah. Oh, and Station Eleven. Absolutely. All of them have been good. Actually, the English, English as well. Great. Yeah. So we've really yeah. been having a lot of fun. So um, thank you, Karen. Thank you, Lou. I love you both so much. Me too. I appreciate you. Ditto. Uh, and uh, listeners, uh, stay safe. Be kind. We'll talk to you soon. Goodbye. Bye. Bye bye. And see. The proceeding has been a JKL Media production. Thank you.